Philadelphia State Hospital at Byberry, operational for nearly 60 years until its closure in 1990, stands as a stark symbol of the horrors that can occur in mental health care. Initially established to provide care for various mental and physical disorders, Byberry quickly descended into an abyss of inhumanity and misconduct. The institution was plagued by shocking allegations of murder, assault, child abuse, and severe overcrowding, with disturbing reports of naked, excrement-covered patients wandering its halls. Compounding these atrocities were experiments conducted by a corporation on unsuspecting patients. Join us today as we explore the history of Byberry Mental Hospital, one of the most horrific examples of early 20th century mental asylums, notorious for their deplorable methods and treatment. But before we do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Originally named the Philadelphia State Hospital, Byberry Mental Health Hospital is predominantly remembered for its legacy of abuse. Initially, it mirrored other asylums of its era, starting as a working farm designed to foster patient independence and healing. However, like many institutions of that time, Byberry expanded into a sprawling, multi-building complex, leading to severe overcrowding. This rapid growth outpaced its staffing capabilities, resulting in inadequate management of both patients and facilities. As Byberry struggled with its expanding population, the administration began employing individuals without requiring qualifications or training. Essentially, anyone seeking employment, regardless of their background, could find a job at Byberry. During World War II, nearly 3,000 conscientious objectors who refused to participate in the war on religious grounds were assigned to work at mental health facilities across the United States, including Byberry. It was primarily through their reports and photographs that the deplorable conditions at Byberry were exposed, shedding light on the inhumanity within its walls. The severe understaffing at Byberry led to a critically low nurse-to-patient ratio, resulting in significant neglect of basic care. Patients often remained unbathed and unclothed for extended periods, sometimes spanning weeks. The facility's cleanliness deteriorated drastically, with patient bedding left unwashed and the floors becoming sticky from urine. Faced with overwhelming challenges and inadequate resources, many staff members resorted to using restraints on patients, often for prolonged periods, as a means of management rather than providing proper care and attention. By 1970, Byberry had recorded at least 57 deaths, all tragically linked to patient neglect. The hospital's policy of allowing patients some freedom intended as a reward for good behavior and high functionality, led to unforeseen and dire consequences. In the surrounding community, residents occasionally found patients sleeping on their lawns, a disturbing testament to the facility's lack of supervision. More tragically, some patients who left the hospital grounds ended up taking their own lives, overwhelmed by the outside world. In one particularly heart-wrenching incident, a patient who wandered off during winter was unable to find help to return and tragically died from exposure, highlighting the severe deficiencies in care and oversight at Byberry. Byberry was notorious for a controversial treatment method, infamously known as the water cure. This approach, detailed in a Philadelphia Record newspaper article, highlights a significant aspect of the institution's troubling history. According to the account, an attendant soaked a large towel in water after wringing it out, he clamped the towel around the patient's neck. The attendant pulled the ends together and began to twist. First, he tightened the noose. Then he gave the towel a slow turn to let the patient know what was in store for him. The patient begged for mercy, but the twisting continued. The patient's eyes bulged, his tongue swelled, his breathing labored. At length, his body fell back on the bed. His face was a dreadful white, and he did not appear to be breathing. Fifteen minutes elapsed before he showed signs of returning to life. The patient was subdued. Numerous instances of abuse and torture by Byberry's staff likely went unreported or were deliberately overlooked. Reports emerged of staff members exercising caution when inflicting physical harm on patients, using weapons or their fists. Ironically, some of the most horrific abuses occurred under the guise of medical treatments. 
doctors at the facility were known to extract teeth without any form of anesthesia and conducted other surgeries and procedures without pain relief, raising serious questions about the motives and ethics behind these practices. Larry Reel, a psychiatrist who trained at Byberry Hospital in the 1970s, recounted witnessing a staff member stitching a patient's wounds without any form of pain relief. This practice stemmed from a misguided belief that individuals with schizophrenia are insensate to pain, thus negating the need for pain management. This underuse of painkillers for necessary medical procedures was in stark contrast to the overuse of such medications in experimental contexts. Smith Klein French, a pharmaceutical company, established a lab within Byberry and conducted extensive, ethically dubious drug testing on patients. These patients, unable to give informed consent, were coerced into participating in clinical trials, leading to the tragic deaths of hundreds. The horrors at Byberry escalated when two orderlies committed a gruesome murder in 1919. They confessed to strangling a patient so violently that his eyes were dislodged. Their defense was untreated PTSD from their service in World War I, a claim that shockingly led to no legal repercussions. They even received a pay raise following the incident. Violence was rampant within the hospital walls, with patient-on-patient -patient murders occurring frequently. Byberry was not just a mental health facility, but also a holding ground for criminals sent for psychiatric testing instead of prison. The environment was rife with murders and assaults. In one harrowing case, a female patient was assaulted and murdered on the property. Her body discovered only after staff noticed other patients carrying her teeth. The discovery of two more bodies in 1989, one missing for nearly five months, highlighted the facility's neglectful attitude. Patients who disappeared seemed to be quickly forgotten, reinforcing a disturbing, out-of-sight, out-of-mind mentality within Byberry. Ultimately, after years of accumulating reports and growing public outcry, Byberry Mental Hospital was shut down on June 21, 1990. The facility's conditions had been under scrutiny for decades, with significant media attention highlighting the situation. As far back as 1946, Life magazine published photographs taken inside the hospital, exposing the grim reality of life within its walls. Notably, author Albert Deutsch provided a chilling account of his tour of the facility, capturing the essence of the horrors that unfolded there. Deutsch wrote, As I passed through some of Byberry's wards, I was reminded of the pictures of the Nazi concentration camps. I entered a building swarming with naked humans herded like cattle and treated with less concern, pervaded by a fetid odor so heavy, so nauseating, that the stench seemed to have almost a physical existence of its own. Byberry is more than just a decaying building surrounded by fences. Visitors often feel a heavy atmosphere there, a reminder of the dark past that still hangs over the area. The place seems to carry the weight of its history, making it more than just an abandoned structure. It's said that the souls of patients who suffered and perished there still linger. Visitors and paranormal investigators frequently report sightings of ghostly figures drifting through the woods surrounding Byberry. Eerie, spine-chilling screams are sometimes heard emanating from the decaying structure, adding to the site's haunting ambiance. Many recount feelings of being incessantly watched, encountering mysterious floating orbs, and an unsettling sense of being followed as they navigate the desolate grounds. The harrowing memories of the atrocities at Byberry are kept alive through the accounts of its survivors. It's a sobering reminder that these grave abuses persisted until just three decades ago. Today, the facility stands abandoned and decaying, a fate that perhaps should have befallen it much earlier, before it became the site of so much despair and loss for countless individuals who entered its doors seeking hope and a better future.